Okay, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about something maybe a little bit more positive. Um, our defense and, you know, some of the improvement. You talked um, a lot about how there may be some optimism on Florida's defense for this upcoming season. And one of the things that you highlighted was a boomer bust stat. And essentially what you suggested is that Florida's 2023 defense may actually have been improved from the couple of years before with a big butt. And the butt was that they gave up some of these big boom plays far too often, right? Yeah, so I mean, it's a little bit of both. So not only did they give up the boom plays. So these, this is a stat from Sports Info Solutions. Um, they were they were generous enough to sponsor the magazine. Uh, so they have these boomer bust stats, and a boom play is anything over one EPA, so expected point added, and a bust is anything less than one EPA. And so a bust play on defense is something where you're busting the offense. And so it wasn't. So Florida gave up an abnormal or above average for the SEC number of boom plays, but they also had a significantly below average number of bus plays. And that combination or that spread is really where I think the the rubber meets the road for the defense. So if you look at stats like success rate, which typically correlate really well with with defensive performance, Florida was a major outlier last year. So the teams that say had a 38% success rate last year and the teams in the SEC that have done that over the last three years, I think the worst team out of all of them was like 38th in the country in defense. And Florida's sitting there at like 124th in terms of yards per play allowed. Yeah. So it was a major outlier. So yeah. success rate tends to be pretty stable. Sure. So if they can maintain that success rate, I expect the defense to be way better just because they're able to maintain that. But they got to figure out the boom and bust stuff because you look at it, all those other defenses and it's not necessarily that they don't give up boom plays, but it's that they don't, they're gaining something by giving up the big play, right? So they're giving up a big play, but they're also getting some big plays on the back end. Florida didn't get any of that, which meant there was this huge spread between negative plays and big plays they were giving up. And I mean, think about it. When was the last time Florida's defense had somebody in a third and long or a fourth and long? I mean, the only time I can remember is against Missouri, and that didn't turn out so well. So, you know, the 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 defense had a lot of holes last year, certainly. I'm not saying it was perfect, but there are underlying statistics that suggest they were definitely better than under Patrick Tony. And I think Ron Roberts is going to bring some stuff to the fold that will that will help reduce the boom plays at least. I think it might might reduce the bus plays a little bit, but I don't know that they need to necessarily do better in both categories. They just need to close the spread between the two. So one of the things that Florida also changed this off season was they got a new strength and conditioning coach and truly a new strength and conditioning program. Um, how, how big of a deal is that for continued steps forward on defense? Do you think? Uh, I mean, so Florida missed a ton of tackles. Yeah. Um, and that's maybe the place where you look at and say strength and conditioning is going to be a big deal that I, I tend to be a little bit less, um, less optimistic about that from the standpoint of it's not like Georgia doesn't have a strong strength and conditioning program or Auburn or, or Texas or LSU or Ole Miss. Like, so all you've really done is caught up to the, well, to well, the competition, right. but <laughs> which is still, fun, a- right. I mean, if you were starting behind the eight ball, we have players telling us that they were training more like they played soccer than football. I mean, our, our Florida's own players have said that, and they've talked about how this is. And I think, you know, when you talk to guys that have, you know, have come out of Florida over the last 20 years, one of the biggest things, I feel like the biggest themes you always hear is that like that team was built over the summer. We didn't succeed in the fall because of what we were doing in the, in the fall. We succeeded in the fall because of the things we did over the summer. So, uh, you know, if this program is really that much better, that's got to translate on the field, you would think, right? I mean, so I, I think the defense is going to be better. I think it's going to be better for a bunch of different reasons, and strength and conditioning will be part of that. Um, I, but it's just a small part, right? It, and and this, this sort of the same thing I said about special teams is – it's going to be death or improvement by paper cuts. Like you're going to have to get a little bit better player play at linebacker. If you get a little bit better play at defensive end, you're going to have to get a little bit better play at defensive tackle. There's nobody that I look at on the defensive side of the ball outside of Devin Moore and say star. Devin Moore hadn't been able to stay healthy, but he's looked like a star when he was out there. And, you know, I saw him live against Florida state and I'm like, the defense looks completely different with Moore yeah. out there at corner. So 
assuming that more can stay healthy, maybe you've got a shutdown corner. But other than that, there's not like some giant star who's just jumping off the field at me on defense. Maybe Shamar James jumps into that, that category, but you know, is Slackman going to be able to do it? The transfer from Penn, like that's a huge ask from the Ivy league. Um, Caleb banks and, and Cameron Jackson were okay, but not great last year. You're obviously losing human Milan on the outside. We got justice Boone coming back from injury. So there's nobody that I look at and say it's an, it's an enormous, it's enormous. It's an enormous star. What I look at is I say each of these guys individually has a opportunity to perform better than the guy who was there last year. And if all of them can piece that together and if strength and conditioning is a part of that, then yeah, they can be better overall. Um, but you know, I, again, I sort of look at it and I go when the Georgia running back runs into you, whether you were doing yoga or whether you were in the weight room, lifting a ton of weight, you still got to be in the right position. You still got to have the right technique. You still have to have read the, you still have to have watched enough film to know where he's going to be. Yeah. And then you got to actually put your, put your head down and be tough enough to bring him down. And all of those things, the, the last part obviously is strength and conditioning oriented, but all the other stuff has to do with all the other coaches and all the other schemes and all that sort of stuff too. So it's all sort of one big package and certainly it's good that they've fix that problem but it is interesting this is the second time we've had the problem where the players are complaining about the strength and conditioning program in the last what six or seven years yeah and so you know again that's another mark where i look at and say you know doesn't a football coach who's been a head coach for multiple years know that you need hardcore lifting for football like why are you why are you uh, moving back and forth like a windshield wiper here like don't you have principles and stick to those principles? If you think yoga is the best way to go, then stick with it. Maybe it's the wrong, but at least you'll go down with it to, to go back and forth. I think is, is a sign of operational disarray within the, w- within the organization. I think that strength and conditioning coach is probably the single hardest coaching job to jump from a group of five to power five. I think it is. I think what was going on was acceptable at Louisiana. And so it, it wasn't broken. So he didn't fix it. And he just kind of assumed that the jump would happen when in reality, what I think was happening in Louisiana is that coach Napier is an elite evaluator of talent. So you take this talent that is elite, particularly for the group of five, and then you put them in a program that I'm sure is, I mean, there our players never looked gassed to me at all. Right. Like I think that it is, it's obviously successful on some fronts, but I don't know that you need to be as big and powerful as you need to be in the sec to play in a group of five conference. So I think that, you know, but I don't like the concept of I'm going to pick up my entire staff from a group of five program and then come and drop it in a power five, because if every single one of those people were good enough to be in a power five, why are none of them there? Um, well, so the, the, the only thing I would say to that is that Napier spent time at Clemson and Alabama. Yeah. And so he knows what a real strength and conditioning program looks like. Yeah. And he, he's responsible for oversight of his sure. strength and conditioning sure. program. And so I don't disagree with you that what's acceptable at Louisiana might not be acceptable at Florida sure. in the, in the sec. But I think the reality is these guys get paid an awful lot of money. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have yeah. no problem with the criticism, right? I'm right. much faster to criticize Napier and the coaches than I am to criticize the players sure. because maybe, maybe that'll change. Not the players are getting paid as much as the coaches are, right. but, uh, but, <laughs> But, but look, these guys get paid an awful lot of money to be the organizational CEOs. Yeah. And part of being an organizational CEO is making sure you got the right people in place. Now, look, sounds like they've got the right people in yeah, place. Yeah, I think now. he gets credit for making that move because I, you know, I it was a big one and it was probably not easy. Now, the hard part is is that you usually need need about twelve months to get your new strength and conditioning program up and fully functioning on you know all cylinders. So I guess it kind of remains to be seen whether or not that move was too little, too late, or just in the nick of time. Wanted to give a quick shout out to Meldon Law for their support, not only the Florida Gators, but our channel as well. Stay tuned for a quick video of theirs before we head out. After the car accident, your personal life takes a toll when you have major injuries. Being a mother of three kids, having to work, it became overwhelming. Didn't know what was going to be my outcome, but Meldon Law actually they went above and beyond. At Meldon Law, we're not just your legal team, we're your support system. You do not have to go through this alone. At Meldon Law, we won't back down.